In order to work with Jitter, it's fundamental to understand what a JIT matrix is. The JIT matrix is the main Jitter data container. That means that it is mostly used to store video and image data. But it is equally useful to store the data that comes from our OpenGL 3D shapes. Let's now see how the data gets actually stored inside the JIT matrix. A JIT matrix is something that in other programming languages would be called an array. But an array is usually one-dimensional while a JIT matrix is a multidimensional container for data. Let's see what does this mean. So let's start with the graphical representation of a one-dimensional matrix. See those rectangles? These are called cells. This matrix is a one-dimensional matrix with 12 cells in it. The data that we put inside the matrix gets stored inside those cells. Like array in other languages, every cell gets an index starting from zero, but every cell can contain more than just one single value. In fact, it can contain up to 32 different values. The different values that get stored inside a single cell are said to be lying inside different planes. Also, the index for the planes starts from zero. You can imagine those planes as different layers of data, every of them lying inside the single cell. But what kind of data can we actually put inside a matrix? Well, we are talking about numbers. There are different types of numbers though that we can put inside the matrix. The most used data type for video and images is called char, which has 8 bits, and so it can assume 256 different values. If we want to work with the larger integer numbers, we can use the data type long. It will give us uh, signed integer numbers ranging from minus 2 billions and more to plus 2 billions and more. If we want to have more precision and so using floating point numbers, we can use the float32 with 32 bits and the float64 with 64 bits data type. When working with OpenGL, most of the time we are going to use the float32 data type. When using this data type, the range is usually from 0 to 1 floating point. We said that a JIT matrix is a multidimensional container for data. So let's see how a two-dimensional matrix looks like in a graphical representation. You can see that it looks like a grid made of cells, every grid dimension having its own index starting from zero. Still, every cell can contain different planes of data. See those little colored lines in the first cell? I put them there to symbolize four different values in four different planes. Let's also take a brief look at a three-dimensional matrix. You can see that it looks like a cube, having the x and the y dimensions but also the Z dimension. For the moment, let's not worry about the three-dimensional matrix. These are used just for peculiar applications. We are ready now to see an example of storing an image inside a JIT matrix. To load an image inside a JIT matrix, we have to use the import movie message. When we click on this message, a load window will appear and we can choose the image to import. This black square below the JIT matrix is called the JIT P window. It's a display window that we can embed inside the patch. To send the image out of the JIT matrix object and display it on the P window, we have to send a bang to the JIT matrix. You know that an image is made up of pixels, and every pixel has its own color. When we store an image inside a JIT matrix, every pixel gets stored inside a cell and all the values or color channels that compose the color of the pixel are stored inside the different planes. Usually an image or video frame has three or four channels. These are the red, green, blue, and occasionally also the alpha channel. When we are storing an image inside the matrix, the matrix assumes that it is a four channels image. So even if it doesn't have an alpha channel, the matrix includes it as the first plane. So, the order in which the matrix assumes that the channels of the image are disposed is alpha, red, green, and blue. So, alpha is the first plane, red is the second plane, green is the third plane, and blue is the fourth plane. We can visualize the values contained in every single plane for all the cells of the matrix using the JIT cell block object. In order to send the matrix data to the JIT cell block object, we have to send another bang to the JIT matrix. The dimensions of this image are 16 by 16, so the JIT cell block will be also a 16 by 16 grid. 
By default, the JIT cell block object will visualize the data in the first plane of the matrix, so the plane zero, which is always the alpha plane. As you can see, this image has an alpha channel, with values 0 and 255, which is the maximum. When importing an image with the import movie message, in fact, the JIT matrix uses the char data type for the image data. When the cell has the value 0 for the alpha channel, this pixel is not going to be displayed, so in our P window we have a black pixel. If we want to visualize the values for all the cells in the first plane of the matrix, we have to send to the JIT cell block object the plane 1 message. Now we are visualizing the values for the red channel of the image. To visualize the data contained in every cell for the green channel of the image, so the plane 2, we have to send the JIT cell block object the plane 2 message. Same goes for visualizing the blue channel, so the plane tree. We have to send the plane tree message. If we want to visualize the data contained in all the planes at once, we can send the JIT cell block object the plane minus one message. In this way, it will visualize all the four channels at once. There is also another object that will give us information about the JIT matrix. This object is called the JIT matrix info. Connecting this object to a root object, we can extrapolate the number of planes contained in the matrix, the type of data that the matrix uses, and the dimensions of the matrix. In this case, you can see that the image, and so the matrix, has dimension 16 by 16. Let's note that when we use a JIT movie object to load and play a movie, we are outputting every frame of the movie in a JIT matrix format. So, four planes in the alpha, red, green, and blue order. You can see that also the JIT movie object uses the char data type to work with matrices. Let's also note that the JIT matrix automatically assumed the dimensions of the incoming frame. We can change this behavior and so force the receiver matrix to maintain its own dimensions by using the adapt attribute. But in order to do this, we have first to see how we can build our own custom matrices. Let's now open the matrix lesson args maxpath. The JIT matrix object takes a series of arguments to define the characteristics of the matrix. The first argument is the name of the matrix. The computer automatically assigns a name to the matrix when we create it, but if we want to specify it explicitly, we can type it as the first argument. The name argument is optional which means that we could start from the second argument anyway, and the matrix would still recognize the arguments in the proper order. So if we, we inserted a name, the second argument is the number of planes that each cell of the matrix will have. So in this case, one. This means that every cell of the matrix will contain just one value, so the matrix will really look like an array. The third argument is the data type that the matrix will use. Let's note that if a matrix with a different data type comes in, such for example float32, the data type that is going to be used is the one of the receiver matrix, so in our case char. The third argument is the length of the first dimension of the matrix, let's call it the x dimension. If we put 10 into it, that means that the matrix will have a length of 10 on the x axis, so we now created an empty array of 10 char values. If we add another argument, so the fifth argument, this will be the length of the y dimension of the matrix. So now the matrix doesn't look anymore like an array, but really like a matrix, which means a grid of values. If we want to manually change the value contained in a cell, we can use the set cell message. This message takes a list of values. The first are the coordinates of the cell inside the matrix. So, since this is a two-dimensional matrix, the coordinates will be a two-values list. Then, this message takes the word val, followed by a list of numbers, which are the values that we can set for every plane of the matrix. In this case, since this is a one-plane matrix, we just need one value after the val keyword. Let's note that I switched the order of the values inside the set cell message. I did that because the pack object will output its list only when the leftmost value is received. And so the set cell message will be updated only when the value is set, in order not to change the values of the cells when simply changing the coordinates. 
After the set cell message, we send a bang message to the JIT matrix object in order to make it output its modified matrix. Let's for example change the first cell on the left up corner. It has index 0 on the x dimension and index 0 on the y dimension. So to fill this cell, we can just change the value in the number box. Since this matrix has only one plane and it's made of char values, we can only color the pixels with 256 shades of gray, ranging from complete black to complete white. As you can see, the value gets updated also in the JIT cell block object, since we are visualizing the first plane, which has index 0. Let's change some other cells' values, just to understand how the indexing in the JIT matrix works. By changing the cells index, we are modifying different cells inside the matrix. Let's modify our patch so that we have now a three planes matrix. Now we also need the three number boxes in order to change the values in the different planes that have now become red, green and blue. So, after modifying the pack object, we also need to modify the set cell message in order to still have the color changed only when the um, color values are modified. In order to make the pack object output its values only when the color number boxes are modified, I attach the trigger bang object to the leftmost inlet of the pack object. Let's also create a clear and bang message in order to clear the current matrix. You can now see that by changing the values in these number boxes, we are changing the values in the different planes of the matrix. The resulting color will be the mix of these three values. Let's now see why is it useful to give a name to a JIT matrix object. Let's create another JIT matrix, with no argument but the name, which is the same as the other matrix that we already created. If we send a bang to this new matrix, it will output the same matrix that is contained inside our previous one. That's because matrices with the same name access the same location in memory, so the same data. Let's now open the patch matrix lesson algo max path. In this patch, we can see how we can fill a JIT matrix using uh, algorithms instead of simply filling the values by hand. For this patch, I prepared three simple algorithms. Let's take a look at what they produce. So an important thing to note is that the output of these algorithms is a function of the x, y coordinates that come in from our UZI objects. So for all the different coordinates of the cells, they are going to return different values. The first algorithm is a multiplication of sine and cosine functions. The input for these uh, cosine and sine, so we can say their frequency, are the coordinates of the cell scaled by some values uh, in order to make a pleasant result. With the modulus operator, we return just a fractional part of the sine waves, so this is why we are getting this broken mirror-like effect. The second algorithm is a sum of sine functions, but the input for these sine functions are other sine and cosine functions, so we, we have this um, peculiar effect. Sometimes you just have to play with uh, maths or trigonometry in order to, to obtain something interesting. The third algorithm calculates the distance for every cell coordinates from the center. In order to do this, we first calculate the distance from the cell coordinates to the center by subtracting 100 from the coordinates values. And then we take the hypotenuse of this value in order to calculate the length of the distance vector. The third output of the switch object is a simple multiplication of the second and third algorithm properly scaled in order to not exceed the 255 value. So that is everything for our introduction to the JIT matrix object. See you on the next lesson.